Welcome to another Tuesday Live podcast with Jen and Joe. I'm Jen. I'm Joe. And today we're going to go over how to find and buy creative deals virtually. And how we even got into it in the first place, um, I would say it was kind of what? On accident. On accident, just like everything else that happens, right? Yeah, it was the pandemic. And the first, I don't remember, we were running sponsored ads maybe is what happened. And mm-hmm. the deal came through close by Albany. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I forgot all about that mm. one. That's what put us on the map of, Ooh, we can do this. Well, and I think that's what happened was we were starting to talk to sellers about deals. So today we're going to break down mm-hmm. how we found them, how we made them and how you can too. So this is going to be the topic of today. If you've got any questions, make sure you drop them down in the chat because this is live. If you're listening to this on the recording Uh, Guys, you should be coming live to this Tuesday podcast because many people like, hey, Joe, I've got a question. Well, bring them here. We'd love to answer them. And then number two, before we even get started, I have a lot of people reaching out lately, and I know you have too. They're like, hey, Joe, like, how can I do this like myself? How can I take it up to another level? So if that's something that you want to learn how to buy creative finance deals without using banks, without using your credit, hit me up on my cell phone number, my actual cell phone number. 585-207-2240, and let's get on a call, and we could love to see if we could help you too. But that's my actual cell phone number, so I'd love to chat. Um, Just don't call me at midnight because I won't answer. (laughs) But I'll call you back at 5 a.m. But I might call you back at 5 a.m., so just be ready for that. Um, But today I'm really excited because I feel like we kind of cracked the code a little bit earlier on doing business virtually. Mm Mm-hmm. And we can even like, you know, at first it was just a couple hours. It was in the same state, but then, you know, we, <laughs> we ended up moving. And so out of state investing became a real thing real fast for us. And so that's why we're here to be able to really just chat about that. And it's not as scary as it seems. So some of you might be in markets where you just don't want to buy in your backyard. And so this is something that you could really take note of, or maybe there's a great deal, but it's just a little further outside of your comfort zone. And maybe we can kind of just burst that bubble and let you know, like it's totally possible. So, Oh, we're asking for their cell phone again. Uh, 585-207-2240 is my cell phone number. Ooh, maybe we just drop that down in the go. chat. Um, Ask and you shall receive. So there you go. That's, That's my good. actual cell phone number, but I will tell you, I think what started doing some of this virtually was I had a job. You did too, but you were staying at home with two little ones. So when a seller would reach out to us and say, hey, what about my house? It wasn't like I was just driving straight there. We would talk on the phone a little bit. And then if we decided it was a good fit, then we'd go see the property. But I could tell you from doing that, many mistakes that we've learned. Mm -hmm. How many properties have we been to that we didn't buy? Too many way too many yeah so we figured out a process that even before we go when we did go we had to ask these questions and then we're like well wait a minute if we're buying a turnkey house and it's beautiful and they just send us all these pictures and it doesn't need a thing do we even need to go and i think that's what kind of started that little bug for us Mm -hmm. and now that we do this virtually we maybe go to one house a year if that, where we actually go there and meet the seller. Um, a lot of it is because we're doing deals all over the country. But number two, we've done deals 15, 20 minutes from us, and I've never gone there, never will, don't want to, uh, because we figured out there's a better way. Mm-hmm. And I know some people might right now might be listening to this, feel like, what are you even talking about? You're buying real estate without even seeing it. It's true. So Uh, How we dialed back to getting into this virtually was we were finding off-market properties. Sellers were reaching out to us because of our marketing. Now, if many of you have heard already, I probably sound like a broken record, but we love Facebook. We love Facebook groups. I hear a lot of people out there saying, I'm spending thousands of dollars per month on lead generation. I actually just got off the call with somebody who wanted to join our coaching program. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even tell you. So she says that she joined another coaching program previously. And they had her spending $1,000 a month on lead generation. What form? Uh, It was Deal Machine. So I don't even know what Deal Machine is, guys. I'm not. I mean, honestly, like that's not even, I mean, it's a lot when you're first starting, but $1,000 really isn't a lot. A month, yeah, $12,000 a year marketing budget isn't a lot. And it reflected because she's like, you know, I'm, I'm sending out these 
my marketing, I'm spending this money and I'm only getting a couple of leads for a thousand dollars a month. Whew. And then when I explained to her that one of our clients just got over 200 leads out of one Facebook group for free, she was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I was like, how much would you have to spend to get a couple hundred leads? And she was like, you don't even want to know the number. I'm like, well, you know, that makes a big difference, guys. So what we were doing is we were generating a lot of leads. And the first thing to doing any business is you got to generate leads. I don't care if it's a donut shop, a tire shop, buying houses, you got to have leads coming in the door. Well, we kind of cracked that code years and years and years ago that we've got more sellers coming in than at times that we could handle. And that's why we just had to hire a bunch more people to help us with that. Um, but when you're when we're generating leads, sometimes they're really close by. And I think one of the first ones that we did was it was three and a half hours from us. The not first deal that we did, first deal we did at a distance. The first deal that we did without even going to see the property. It was about three and a half hours away from us. It was the beginning of COVID and you couldn't go anywhere anyways. They weren't doing any of these things. And it was a fixer upper. We had some pictures and the guy who even sent us the pictures didn't send us great pictures. I just can't stop laughing because the amount of calls he got. <laughs> From what? That Because you posted it and it was such a great deal. Like oh. your phone like blew up for like weeks. Out of control. That's how I knew I had a really good deal because everybody was like freaking out. And then I remember I had calls where I would just share the deal. And so I, break it down a little bit. The, the lead comes in mm -hmm. and we hopped on a call. He had two properties, was it? And he had moved back into this one with his dogs. Yeah. So he inherited his dad's property. He still had his property. This was in upstate New York. He inherited his dad's property. He was living in there. Meanwhile, this is like a really super high end house, but it was all like old dated. The yeah. power was turned off. It had none of these things going to it. Didn't even have water. And so he was sleeping there in the middle of the winter time with his dogs. Mm -hmm. And he says that all the dogs would hop in the bed and they'd keep them all warm at night. And nice this guy. Great guy. Yeah. But that was kind of a situation. He had his other house, but for some reason he's kind of going back and forth. Right. So that was the thing. He wanted to sell it, had an unwanted property. And so sometimes I, I, I have some fun because people will be like, who has an unwanted property? I'm like, lots of people do. Yeah. Well, again, so the other thing that was making me chuckle too is like on the flip side, like when you start posting about this deal, your phone's blowing up with people who know deals, numbers, that area. They see, wow, this is like a steal because it ended up being he couldn't do terms. So it was a cash deal. But when you post it into Facebook groups, you were getting like every All the rotten tomato thrown at you possible because people just love to talk and they like to be keyboard warriors. And most people are not well versed in real estate matters. So they just sit there and type away their opinions, right? So just keep that in mind when you're, you know, doing deals like, yeah, you're going to have people say stuff, but if you do the numbers right and then you connect with the right people and kind of sift through those who are just kind of being a little bit. Well, and I think that was the case is when I was posting it into Facebook groups, I have this deal. I was connecting with other investors. And when I did that, I couldn't believe how many people reached out. I'm like, Joe, that's an amazing deal. I want it. And then I'm having like people fighting over the deal. But then I have the knuckleheads on Facebook who are like, oh, there's there dead bodies in the house. And oh, I mean, all the, the, the things that made no difference, right? Yeah. So you just have to understand that even if you, if, if I were to give away free dollar, $100 bills, people on Facebook be like, yeah, but you know, that's $100. How come you're not giving away free $1,000, right? It's some just knuckleheads. So, so you like, just again, ignore we talk that. about like mindset so much. This is why, because like you're going to get, like virtually beat up a little bit here with people's words, whether it's on a phone call or, you know, a text message or Facebook groups that you're posting in. So you've got to be strong, got to know what you're doing and got to have the, have your, have people have your back. Um, and so that was really definitely part of it. And then that deal, we found a great buyer. And we had buyers fighting over it. <laughs> yeah. And then after I had it under contract, I have two buyers who are constantly calling me like, Hey, listen, like if he doesn't buy it, I'm buying it. Please hold myself next in line. Like, I want that deal. And what's one lesson you learned from that deal? Oh, my gosh. Just one. So I would say on that deal, the one thing that was interesting was um, from sharing the deal, sharing it with some investors, 
some investor, one of them went to the house and tried to skirt around me. Mm -hmm. And then the, the buyer, I'm sorry, the seller called me and was like, Hey, there's somebody here at the house right now said he wants to pay me even more money for the deal. And so how I handled that situation, I think was key. Mm -hmm. And I explained to him, I'm like, John, we are currently buying your house. I do have it under contract. You legally can't sell it to anybody else. And I don't even know why these people are in your driveway. So the best thing to do is just tell them to get lost because they're just wasting their time and your time. And we, I made him understand that when he signed the purchase and sale agreement, that it's a deal and it's a done deal. And he can't go now sell it to somebody else, even if they're knocking on the door, willing to pay more. And I, re I remember who it was and they, we had a conversation about that too. So, but either way, you got to watch out for that sometimes. Mm -hmm. But the conversation you had, like the man of your word, like it was just yeah. so heart to heart. And like at the end of the day, you're just trying to help the guy. You weren't at like, you know, taking all the money by any means. It was a very small spread looking back on things as we, it was our first deal that we'd done that way. And shout out to John because we're friends on Facebook. Yeah. So he still follows us. He might be watching right now. <laughs> so that's really cool. So I learned that from that deal. And then if you remember, we did a deal in Buffalo, New York was the next one that was about an hour from us mm -hmm. and we did that deal virtually as well well wait a minute before we even did that we did the one on clark avenue we did the one in cataragas all virtually we didn't see these houses till after we already bought them yeah so like one of the best things that we were doing because it was you know pandemic times and so we couldn't leave our house it seemed in new york and I distinctly remember doing a virtual walkthrough on FaceTime with the Henrietta property. And the seller's just like chilling in his lounge chair and he's like showing actually both properties, Buffalo and Henrietta. And he's just showing us around and giving us a little tour. And because these properties were recently purchased, right? Like they didn't yeah. have a ton of equity. They just decided, hey, it's 2020, times are weird, I'm moving. Um, both of them actually went to South, uh, North Carolina, which is kind of funny. But that was something we had a lot of people saying, Oh, but you, you didn't even go to the house. You didn't send anybody there, but there were some factors there that played into that. Well, and I had this conversation actually with Ron Legrand and Ron's like, well, wait a minute, you bought real estate without even going to see it. Why would you do that? And he was egging everybody on because he knew what the answer was. Well, why? Because we bought it with no banks. We bought it with no credit with a lot of these properties we're buying with just a hundred bucks down, a couple thousand dollars down and some closing costs. So I'm buying turnkey houses. Now, these are some of the first houses that we bought that weren't junkers mm -hmm. that we needed to bring contractors to and do all this renovating. Like these were already done recently purchased now wanting to sell it a short time after really didn't need much work. Just like sometimes just a good scrubbing guys. That's mm -hmm. all the houses really need, especially if you got pets or things like that. We usually like to throw in some smoke alarms for good measure. <laughs> always smoke alarms, always carbon monoxide detectors. That's my like number one rule when yeah. you own some properties. Make sure there's an overkill of smoke alarms and carbon monoxide detectors. Um, always be on the safe side on that. But I think that was really it. That's what we were doing. We were buying them, putting some smoke alarms, cleaning them, offering them rent to own. Mm -hmm. And that was really, I think, the catalyst that was set everything off. Right. And it's like part of it was we couldn't, we shouldn't go because of COVID. And then now it's just because of time at this point like inconvenience of not driving all over the state of florida or all the way up to new york all the places well i think not only that too if you think about it where we we were buying them this way mm -hmm. but we were also showing them this way too when we were offering properties rent to own even in our very own city i was not going to send jen to the house to go meet strangers there's no way all we did is we put a lockbox on the door and after somebody reached out to us, because we had market the property all over North America, but when somebody would finally reach out and they say, I'm interested, we'd ask them a couple questions. If it was a good fit, we would get on a phone call. And if they liked what, what they heard and we liked what we would hear, we'd set up a showing. Now, the showing was done virtually, which means we would send them to the house, but they would send us a copy of their driver's license. They would get to the house. We'd give them a lockbox code. And everybody would freak out. You're sending people there to the house without you being there. I'm like, absolutely. I don't want to show houses. Well, even when we first started to do rent to own, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was realizing that. Yeah. Cause you were at a tent sale. So back in his car days, he would be gone for like the whole month of June. I shout out. I see some of your old uh, car friends on and it was terrible the one summer where we had five properties available for rent to own and i literally had a two-year-old and a four-year-old and i remember one time this guy keeps calling me 
and he's like, the number's not working. I can't get in the lock box. So I pile the kids in. It's like sticky hot summer day. We drive all the way over and the lock box opens, garage opens up. And I'm like, were you at the right house? Turns out he wasn't because there was like a cat in the window. And so I drive all the way over there just to check on the lockbox. I remember just being so annoyed and then going to get um, ice cream for the kids. But it's just like, you know, you, you just deal with some interesting things, but you don't have to be there. And nor would, you know, otherwise I would have spent my whole life just showing houses. Oh. But, you know, we kept them vacant. We get their driver's license. You send them over and you do a, you know, back then I didn't even do a FaceTime, but now we prefer to do FaceTime. It's nice to kind of talk through chat about what the house is like, any questions that they might have pop up and then, you know, just be there chatting with them because it's just, I don't know, I find it works way better. Well, too, I, had, I didn't want you oh, I never having did. to go show somebody a house just from the walkthrough and be like, okay, I'll let you know. Like, uh-uh, yeah. I want you sitting home. I want you to be able to do it from this, the, your, from our house. And so everybody that would sitting always say- I have a two-year-old and a four-year-old. <laughs> right. Well, everybody would say, well, what happens if they steal your stuff? There's like no stuff to steal. Granted, you are- you know, looking back, we're very fortunate. Like nobody just squatted because that's clearly a thing. But we tried to pick nice area. I mean, we typically bought in nicer areas. So yeah, but I mean, the point of it is, like, we don't even like furnishing the property with appliances. When no. we offer them rent to own, our renters bring in. So it's not like you're going to steal a stove or a refrigerator because there's not one in the house. Yeah. So what are they going to take? I guess you could have the thought of them squatting. You could literally like worry yourself to death and worry yourself right out of doing this business. Yep. And it honestly is like a mental and it's like a, a muscle strength at this point. <laughs> like I think you're way better at it than I. I've gotten a lot better. But there are so many things in this business like, oh, what if this could happen? That could happen. So it's like you plan accordingly. You follow protocol. You try your very best. But guys, there are some times that the people you hire to do a clean out in Watertown they're going to dump all that stuff in a cemetery and you're just going to get a call from the cops. Okay. And on a Sunday morning. That's just something that happens. And <laughs> we survived. <laughs> yeah, that did happen. And, and you know, the funny thing was they had like a Facebook page. They were recommended in this local Facebook group to do yeah. cleanouts. We sent them to do the property. We bought virtually, had some stuff left behind. Mm -hmm. We send them there to do the clean out. They say they're there doing a clean out and then we get a call from the state police saying all this stuff is in the cemetery and uh, lo and behold, they went and cleaned it all up and they did not do the job. So. so what I would do is if you know this stuff is like piling up in a house and you know when a dumpster is needed, <laughs> like make sure you have like actual like FaceTime with the contractor with the dumpster. These people did not have a dumpster. They had a trailer. And where were they going to go? Like couple hours oh yeah I once know. i found out that they didn't have a dumpster on site and they were going to take it all this stuff like hours away i'm like like judge judy would say you're full of crap yeah so i i share that to be like completely authentic with you guys like yeah it is kind of crazy there's weird stuff that happens but you just learn from it and then you develop your systems and processes better protocols maybe make a couple of referral calls and you just roll with it. And it's just, it's life, right? Like it's a little unpredictable, but you have to take some calculated risks. Yep. So I think that's some of the very first steps that we're getting us buying virtually, right? We start buying them locally. We so start showing them locally too, to our rent to own people. So we're used to doing that. We started getting some deals a little bit further from home. You're talking an hour, a couple hours away. And then we got one in Pennsylvania which was now we're in another whole state. Mm -hmm. And when we bought that deal, we bought it with not a dime down. We had like no payments for like, think like three or four months, maybe five months, whatever that was. And it was a no brainer deal. So we go do that deal. And we even put in our rent to own person without ever seeing them, without ever going to the property. And we started doing this routine and we started figuring out what was working. Um, and then the one that really just catapulted everything is we had a seller reach out to us and they said they have a house they want to sell in North Carolina. So we were chatting with them and they said, well, if you really want to help us out, we would much rather you buy our house that's available in North Pole, Alaska. And I'm like, North Pole, Alaska? Like, does Santa want to sell his house? Like, we were goofing around. Like, we were giggling at first when we got brought that deal. But then we realized these people are actually in a real situation. For shout out for some of you might not know, but North Pole, Alaska, they've got a military base, big happening town, not just Santa Claus and, you know, making gifts to the North Pole. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we did is we found out they had a house vacant. They wanted to list it. The realtor says it needs some work. So before I'll even <laughs> list it, I'm going to want this work done first. 
people were making a 12. Ah, oh, Brittany, there she is. Uh, Brittany was the one that brought us that deal. Um, she was on our team at the time and says, Joe, Jen, I have a deal in North Pole, Alaska. And we started giggling to Brittany about it. So glad you could tune in today. Um, but that's really what, what it was. And when we, when we found that deal, we talked to the seller. We found out they were making a $1,200 payment to this house that was vacant mm -hmm. for over two years. And they didn't have the money to go fix it up. So when we talked to them about buying the house and they agreed on terms, us buying it, taking over their existing mortgage. But once again, I didn't want to have a house in North Pole, Alaska, because it gets cold up there and like not furnaces and all this stuff. And it was just kind of new to us. So we actually, um, we put it on. As... Do you wish we had kept that? No. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back on it now, maybe because I saw it got sold again yeah, recently. Yeah. <laughs> the numbers I are really good. Saw what it sold for, um, maybe, but it's just you know North Pole, Alaska. I was like, holy cow! So what we did was we shared that deal with other investors that were in North Pole, and we found a buyer for it within like three days. Yeah, our dispo girl Courtney, shout out. She worked her tail off and found one like right away. <laughs> yeah. And so that deal, uh, we found a buyer. He gave us a, a nice assignment fee for it, a finder's fee, yep. gave us a nice finder's fee for it. But what he did was he bought it. He renovated it because he was already doing like five or six jobs right in the same neighborhood. And then he listed it for sale in the market and somebody in the military moved in and bought the house. So we were able to help the original owners get that $1,200 payment off their back every month. We helped out somebody who lived in the area looking for another deal. He obviously hired contractors too. So that helped the contractors. There was attorneys involved. Then we helped out a homeowner. Well, he did by selling it to him, but a homeowner. Mm -hmm. So, so many people get affected on that deal in a positive way. It was pretty awesome. Yeah. And after I remember looking at Jen, talking with Brittany and the team, and I was like, well, if it's a good deal and it's in North Pole, Alaska, like we could be finding deals all over. So we, a little bit crazy, started doing Facebook ads, but we are running them nationwide. Do not recommend. Don't do that. Uh, because uh, at the time, Brittany called me and was like, hey, Joe, we need to slow this down. We've got so many leads coming in right now. It is out of control. Yeah. And you're trying to find deals, you know, comps in rural Indiana and all well, these Every market we've talked about before is really different. So is, if you're ready to start exploring different markets, then you really have to start thinking about, like, are you ready to do the research and find boots on the ground, realtors, other investors, networking? You know, it, there is a lot that goes into it. And so it's not for, you know, somebody just starting out to, like, dive into, you know, more than I would say one to two markets. So here's the deal. Uh, if you're going to start doing this virtually, you can start in your own neighborhood. You can start in your own state. You can start an hour away, right? So maybe the deals are in this area, but it's an hour from us. Well, then I'm going to look at doing that deal virtually. But then I got to say, and I don't know why, all of my California friends and investors and a lot of our California clients who are in our coaching group, for some reason, nobody wants to buy in California. Mm -hmm. So every one of our California investors, they all want to do deals virtually. So Ohio seems to be a hot spot. Um, Florida, everybody loves Florida, Texas. Indiana. So find out where your hot spot is. So maybe you live in California and you're listening to this right now. And maybe you don't want to buy there, but you do want to buy in Ohio. Mm -hmm. Well, then find out where in Ohio and start marketing in those areas. And what we've learned, even if I find a deal that's an hour from me, if a seller says, yes, you have a deal and we're going to make that deal, I have to drive an hour there. I'm going to spend at least an hour at the property, right? And then I'm going to spend an hour driving back. That's three hours. And that same three hours, I could have talked to how many more sellers looking for another deal. I could have done so many other things and I could have paid somebody a few hundred bucks to walk the property, to take pictures, to do a full-blown inspection of the property, to have a trained professional who knows what to look for look for all the little things so then i could understand what that property needs without having to go there mm -hmm. but, yeah that buffalo one i look back i'm like like i remember we walked in and we realized it had a little bit of a dog smell so we didn't even eat our lunch inside no we ate it in the back shed but that was like nothing that we could have couldn't have just sent our contractors out and they would have they addressed it because they did so it was like oh okay so realize that like you don't need to go to every property so here's one tip that Jen just started bringing up 
that I will tell all of you, if you buy deals virtually, you cannot smell virtually, okay? So when some properties, if we notice now, when I'm looking at it in a seller sense pictures, if I see a lot of dogs, cats, pets, I've got one in Florida, the guy's got like 18 birds in this little tiny house. You got to understand there's going to probably be some of the smells that you're not going to see, right? So that's really- <laughs> I smell. What's that? You don't see, yeah. Oh, you know what I meant. <laughs> So you're not going to get to smell that part, yeah. but, which in some cases... You know it's there, thing. though. You hear a dog bark, and you just assume what you're going to smell. You hear a cat or birds in this case. Mm -hmm. But you factor it in, put it into your budget cost, you know, and that's really allowing yourself that room. Like, so when you're chatting with the sellers and you're asking them questions, like, make sure you're asking a lot of those questions. And then also, like, you're not tying yourself to a number that you can't then go back and have some wiggle room on because that always happens too. Yeah, and so here's the thing. If you hear a dog, you're talking to a seller and you hear a dog in the background, I always say, oh, you have a dog. That's awesome. What kind of dog do you have? I have one too, right? And they're going to tell you about, oh, I've got five dogs. And you're like, oh boy. Well, I can imagine maybe that have a little odor of dog in the house. So mm -hmm. sometimes in casual conversations, the other thing too is if I get pictures of the house and I see dog crates or I see dogs or only, I just assume mm -hmm. it's going to have that smell. But that's, that's about as bad as it gets. So can sellers, you know, if you're buying these turnkey houses that really don't need much, maybe just a little bit of paint or something like that. And that's why we like terms so much. Mm -hmm. And these creative finance deals is because of the fact is we're buying mostly turnkey houses. Yeah. Even the light flips tend to be a little more involved than you would think. <laughs> a little bit. Always. So, but they're still doable. And if there's money to be made, then have at it. Yeah. So I think the, the when we're dialing back to how are we finding these deals, we primarily love Facebook marketing. Um, when we first got started, we did direct mail. you got to spend thousands to do direct mail. Um, I would just cold call Zillow leads. It's like banging your head against the wall and wondering why your forehead works doing that. So if you cold call, don't get me wrong. It works. Every way works. But there are just some that are a lot more challenging than others. And for me, I like talking to people. I just don't want to have to cold call 100 people a day. So when we really dialed into how to bring in leads through Facebook, that was our favorite way. And the one neat thing about Facebook, whether I'm targeting Facebook groups or rather I am spending some money running ads, you could target wherever you want in the country. So if, if we want leads coming in Kansas City, Missouri, we can get on leads in Kansas, City, in Kansas City, Missouri today and start getting them coming in today. We can start talking to sellers. We can find out if we have some deals or not. So I got to say, that's been my favorite way of doing them. Well, I think it's efficient too, because it doesn't matter what your profession is. You work around your schedule. So the people who say, I don't have the time, <laughs> go do the time audit that I, I share in our emails and download that PDF or just take out your binder and write down every half hour, hour what you're doing. Well, how can I get those, Jen, if I don't already subscribe to your email? Go to Creative Finance Playbook. Check out the makeover. She just had a little facelift. Um, and then if you scroll to the bottom and just you know submit your information, you're going to get some really awesome tips and tricks uh, every single week. But your time is yours and you just have to make sure that you're, you know, accurately using it. And so when people say I don't have time, like I'm sure you're very busy. We really, truly all are. And so um, I love it when people tell me that, you know, they have, they kind of like make their own routine where in the morning she's brewing her coffee and she goes and she puts into the Facebook groups and then the leads start trickling in around like from there until lunchtime. So on a lunch break, she is able to start running that script, asking those 10 questions again, right on that website. And you're able to then see, oh my gosh, high level of motivation. People are writing paragraphs. I have a house to sell. I've, I've been making two mortgage payments or I just inherited a home or whatever the urgency is. That's when you pick up the phone as soon as possible. Maybe as soon as possible isn't until three o'clock when you get out of teaching or maybe it's 5.30 on our way home from work and you pull over to, to do a quick call, but it's the 15 minutes that add up. It's not three hours. Those people who say, Oh, I just don't have three hours to do this in. You need the three hours like spread out over the day. Typically, like it's not something that always happens in like this big, large chunk of time. I know it didn't happen for us. So I just like to share that too, because 
whether it's virtual or in person or like in your own backyard, like just find the time, make the time. Well, and I think that's the key. Everybody says, and I think one of the biggest excuses, I don't have the time. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, geez, you know, what's really scary is where my phone says, well, here's your weekly report on how much you've been on your phone this week, Joe. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, here, how much you've been on social media, how much you've been on other things. And I'm like, my gosh. So if all of you got on your phones and looked at how much time we all spend on social media, you, we waste a whole lot of time. And I was mine was way down last week. I was like kind of shocked. It said I was spending more time on like something else. I was like, that's weird. Probably with you and your sauna board. <laughs> Probably, but, but the point is, you know, you just you schedule out what you're going to do. So if you wanted to start targeting deals out of state, and you like, let's say you are in California and you want to start investing in Kansas City, because that seems to be a hot place. People love to check out. You know, start joining those Facebook groups over there and posting in those Facebook groups and then talking to the people that have houses available in those Facebook groups. But just create yourself a little schedule. Don't overthink it. We are in such a <sighs> distracted society of all the bells and whistles and the expensive toys that you just don't even need. Like if you have a pen and paper, like go old school on yourself. Use your notes section in your phone. Use a Google calendar. Keep it simple. Well, and I think too, like what Brittany mentions down here is about setting your priority Yeah. Um, and what you make time for and what you make time for in your life will happen. Um, it's just like anything else. Cause I know when I met Jen, she's like, oh, I'm too busy to date at first. Well, before you met me, maybe. Well, before I met you, I was like swearing off dating. I was going to focus on my studies. I was taking three master's classes and teaching full time and I own my own house and no boy was going to distract me. Gotcha. Uh, you didn't distract me, but here we are. <laughs> yeah. But so what, what the key of it is, is just setting your priorities. And for me, it was always about getting a little bit extra time. How can I squeak an extra hour out of my day and still do all of the things I still wanted to do? And it comes with a sacrifice, guys. Take a look at what you get. Is a TikTok scroll on you got to give up for a little bit? Is it a Netflix account? Is it hanging out with your friends? You know, like just ask yourself seriously, like what is it, what is it you want? And like, how do you actually move that goal towards that goal? Make it happen. Well, and I think you and I, and I'm going to drop a little secret. Some of you may know, but maybe many of you don't. My wife and I, we have turned weird over the years. We don't watch TV at all. At all. We don't watch Netflix. We try to watch a movie, and we're both like, yeah, these all the Movies terrible. are terrible nowadays. That's a different podcast. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a whole other episode. Um, but it's like I can't even get into a TV show at all. Maybe I watch football maybe a little bit. But if that's about we it. We watch every 49ers game. Not everyone. A lot of them we did. But the 49ers, that was it. So if I watch two to three hours of TV a week, yeah. that's including Netflix, that's including all the things, that's it. But you prioritize your time. And you, you do have other outlets that you enjoy, too. And living in Florida, we try to get outside a lot. I will tell you, I was at a homeschool meet up today and of course i'm the only dad there which is pretty awesome because when i walk up i'm like hey homeschool moms how are we doing kids are out having some fun i get to go to that too so that's really really cool um but if i'm going to spend two hours three hours away i'd rather do that than watch some tv show um so that's what i spend my time doing but the rest of the time like i'm getting some uh go panthers <laughs> what the i don't know <laughs> <laughs> um but either way i really like to spend a lot of my time either relaxing or if I'm working, I work. I don't like the distractions of social media, although I do enjoy a little TikTok, but that's when I'm winding down and I'm not working and mm -hmm. I don't want to work. I will spend a little bit of time doing that. But um, I think that's been the real difference for us is we've really limited, even moving to Florida, we don't get to see friends and family, right? We do virtually like on a FaceTime, but that's really it. So our time is really spent spending time with the kids doing some things outside of work that we really like to do, like the beach every Sunday. Um, and then when we're here, we're working. And I mm -hmm. think that's really where we focus and really dedicate ourselves. But that's why now putting that time in has really made a big difference for us. And so when I'm, when I'm talking to sellers, I will tell you the one thing that I always like to do, and this is why I love Facebook so much, is if I put a post out there that says, we are looking to buy a property, and I put that into a Facebook group, and I have a lot of people reach out to me, I had somebody a couple weeks ago, the guy said he's in his 60s, he is not selling his house. If he were to sell it, he'd be 10 years before he even considered selling it because he's going to live there forever. But he wants to know what we had paid for it. Are you serious? I swear to God. The weirdest thing ever. 
Not it's selling like, my house, but I'm going to respond to an ad about selling houses. About, yeah, houses. about somebody wanting to buy a house. And even though I'm not going to sell mine, I still want to know what it's worth. So is that somebody I'm going to just hurry up and get on a phone call with? Or work to drive to their house? Absolutely not. Yeah. Okay. But on the flip side, I can't tell you how many situations that we hear somebody just inherited a house. Somebody just got relocated for their job and they're stuck making two mortgage payments and they've already moved. The other house is vacant and empty and they're struggling. Like those are the ones I want to get on the call with right away. Somebody who actually wants to sell, somebody that we can help. They have got some motivation going on. They have a situation going on and maybe even some pain and we can help them with that. Right. So I set my priorities. That if I could only spend a half hour today making calls and I want to make three or four calls, Spend your time wisely. Mm -hmm. uh, don't spend, if you're just getting into real estate investing, I know so many times, and this gets a little frustrating, we want to have the website. We want to have the all the things, right? All the bells and whistles, but you haven't ever even talked to a seller yet. Really get good at talking to sellers, and I think that's what just leads it in. So the free Facebook hack that all of you know, but I'm going to share it again, is you join Facebook groups. So if I'm going to target Jacksonville, Florida, I'm going to go in Facebook and I should probably like on a Saturday do a live, like how to do this exactly how I do it. Um, cause I just hit up some more recently in our area or a weeknight. Yeah. Or even a weeknight. Not a bad idea. Um, so if you'd like to see me do that live and you want to get an invite, drop invite below comment invite. If you want to see how I'm finding in gen, uh, how we're finding these, free Facebook leads in groups and exactly how we do it. Put invite in the comments below. And if I have nobody saying that, then we won't do it. But if I get a whole bunch of y'all saying, Hey, invite, then we'll, we'll host that. And I'll make a whole calendar event and we'll make sure that you get an invite for it. I see one. Okay. We're on a good path already. <laughs> uh, so what we're going to do. Okay. Now there's getting more. So what we are going to do is we'll set up an event, how to do this. But if I want to target Jacksonville, Florida, I'm going to go join a whole bunch of Facebook groups in Jacksonville, Florida. I'm going to make some posts in there. Okay, everybody's waking up now. I see a whole bunch of people. Holy cow. Um, so, Kelly, she is our... Uh, a lot of them are coming in through the group, so make sure you connect with Kelly. We'll get you on our invite list. Oh, I see a whole bunch of people sending invite. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So, then we'll make that event. We'll make it happen. We'll make sure all of you who write invite, you get an invite. If you didn't write invite, you ain't coming. So, make sure you write it down below. <laughs> invite only. Okay. Well, you know, um, but what we do is we're finding these leads guys and they're reaching out to us. And this is what I like better. When I put a post out there on a Facebook group, they're reaching out to us saying, Joe, I want to, I have a property I want to sell. And when somebody reaches out to you versus you reach out to them, those conversations are a lot different, right? If I cold call somebody they're like, what do you want? Um, and I'm trying to just get my foot even in the door, right? Where when somebody reached out to me, I want to ask them some questions. And then I want to get on the call with the good ones, guys. And then that's how you're going to make deals. Now, here's why I love Creative Finance. You can see cash flow, everything around me, Creative Finance. The reason why is because we can make so many deals where back in the old day, old Joe, who was just looking for a big cash discount. And if they didn't have a big cash discount and they wanted full retail and the house didn't really need any work, I would literally crumple that lead up and throw it in the garbage. Now that makes me sick thinking of how many people were highly motivated, mm -hmm. had a situation going on, had some pain going on. And instead of knowing how I could help them, I just, I didn't know. So I threw all those leads out where I could have bought so many more of those properties. So knowing creative finance, I think was a real big game changer for us. So I could offer somebody retail. You want retail? I can pay that if you're open to terms. Mm -hmm. And for the ones who say, I can't do terms, and my property needs a lot of work, well, I could offer cash and do a fix and flip, which we like to do. Some of them can't do as many as we like to. I know, I know. But it's so true though, because I always dial back, I know we share this story a lot, but there was the, a local wholesaler that had a meetup and he shared that like wholesalers, this is not a deal because sometimes people lock up a deal and it's really not a wholesale deal because mm -hmm. you have to, and the numbers have to make sense. You gotta get it super cheap to be able to make any sort of profit. And like he shared everything, he even shared the address. So I think I took a second and I like Googled it and I was like, 
this would work for terms. Did you ask the lady? And he's like, no. So he took the reel down from Instagram and then got on the phone with you and we were able to help. So it's like, once you can spot these two, like, like Joe just said, all of a sudden, like the world opens up and you can like help so many more people when you have this extra tool in your tool belt and have the proper way to structure the deal with the correct paperwork, protecting the seller, protecting yourself, like making sure that you're doing all of the things properly because there are some in intricate things behind a deal like that. But I can say, and I'm going to say it, it's recorded. I'm going to say it live. I can never say anything to my wife. I can't talk any smack about her being on social media because of how many deals and leads and all the things that we've got from you being on social media. <laughs> it's like, it happened to me. I was scrolling. I was like just scrolling. It's taking a minute just being a typical scroller. Um, but this, particular person Cody shout out he always put great content so I enjoyed watching his stuff and I was like oh okay he's got a wholesale oh this is not a wholesale oh this is a terms deal and it was what a triplex or oh my gosh it was a gigantic money maker and, and this deal was in Maryland and both of us were down here in Florida so he shares on his Instagram this is not a deal wholesalers stop wasting your time with these people that aren't deals and start focusing on the deals so when Jen says hey would they be open to terms he didn't understand what that means. I mean, he understood what it meant, but he didn't understand like the process and how to even have that conversation. So we got in a call. I got in a call with the seller. And when I found out more about their situation, this was a gold mine, guys, that many wholesalers or investors are just throwing these leads in the garbage. Now, this lady's situation was she bought a three unit in Baltimore. Um, she had all three sides rented for $4,000 a month. But this poor lady lost her job. And so she was taking the rent money and she was using that to pay her bills. But now she's not making the mortgage payment. So now she's got behind. The bank is sending mean letters. She wanted to sell it. She spoke to her realtor friend, but because she just bought it, she had like no equity. Now she's like 18 grand behind on payments besides. So she owed, I think about 330, 340 on it. If I'm not mistaken, that was the number. Um, the retail on it was probably about 350. So there wasn't really a lot of spread even to list it with a realtor. And all of the wholesale people were offering her 250 cash for it. So this is why she owed too much. They could not buy it for 250 cash because she owed 330, 340 on it. But when we came to find out having the conversation with her that her payment with taxes and insurance and everything included was like 1900 a month. You heard that right. 1900 a month and she's collecting $4,000 a month in rent. So she had a great cash flow. Her interest rate, I still remember, 2.8%. So she had a really low interest rate, turnkey property, cash flowing like a monster. She was about to lose this house and she was freaking out, said her credit take took a big dive. Her credit went into the garbage. She just wants to be able to get out of this house. She doesn't want to have to have it go into foreclosure, but it looks like that's going to happen. All the investors are just leaving her there to nothing happening. Once we have that conversation, we put two grand in her pocket. We paid the back payments which I think was like $18,000. And what Cody did was actually Cody knew somebody in Maryland looking for that mm -hmm. deal who already had some rental properties in the area. And that, that investor gave us a really big finder's fee for that deal, which we did split with Cody because he brought the deal. So we got a check. Cody got a check on a debt deal. Our seller got a couple grand in her pocket. And now with our investor friend who bought the deal, he got a turnkey three unit at a 2.8 2 rate that was cash flowing right away. Mm -hmm. From making those payments now on time, what did that do? That helped boost the seller's credit score back up because now that account was seriously delinquent, is now current, and it's being made on time. So we helped boost her credit, put a couple grand in her pocket, took care of all the back payments, right? So we've helped out so many people in that situation on a dead lead. So uh, I see more people writing the invite. I Holy know. cow. I'm <laughs> glad you guys are taking me up on this. Now I got to do yeah, it. Yeah, we're getting some more requests for your phone number again. Uh, we're going to make them listen to the recording. <laughs> um, so for the phone number, 585, <laughs> my cell phone number. Here, Kelly, can we write that down in the comments too? 585-207-2240. That's my cell phone number. Um, I think I already got a text message from this. So that is my cell phone number. There she goes. Um, 
shoot me a message if you want to get on a call. If you need to learn more about how you can get these deals yourself and you want to learn more about that, I'd love to help. Um, and we love helping people find these deals all over the country. Guys. Yeah, because again, another one we did virtually, it was around the same time Cody and I connected over that one deal. Another couple of investor friends, we, we just wrapped that deal up around the holidays. That one was in Connecticut. And some friends that usually pop in, not sure if they're on today, they do real estate, but they didn't know how to structure creative deals and had a friend that was getting behind on some payments and already left the house, right? She was already living in. So yeah, that's exactly what happened. Had a house in Connecticut. She moved out West. I mean, not out West, like just a little out West. She was like on the West coast house was sitting there vacant. She paid some money to have some contractors do the work. They did some of it and then took off. So now she's got a house that's got some work done, some not stuff in the garage. She just wanted to sell. So um, she wanted 200,000 for the property because that's what she bought it for. She owed, I think it was like about 135. So she I knew. She, you remember all the uh, it's, There's some things my brain's real, real good at. And <laughs> that's usually the numbers, like names and street names. Forget it. I don't even remember. Uh, but in that situation, so she had some equity in the deal. And when we talked to, with her, she's like, I just want 200,000 for it. Now she had back payments we had to take care of. She had, um, we had about $25,000 in renovations we had to do to the house. We had a lot of 20, but you know, things always go over. And I think it was about 24, 25,000. So all in, we bought it with a few thousand dollars in closing costs, like 15,000 in back payments. We put 25 into it. So all sudden and done, we had about 50,000 out of pocket. Now that was brought to us by somebody who listened to this podcast guys. Mm -hmm. And he says, hey, Jen, I think I have a deal. And you know what? They wrote me like, I don't know how many times. So talk about persistence. They reached out a few times. Like, I don't know. It doesn't seem like a deal to me. And then I got a voice memo. And he's a radio personality. So I was kind of like, oh, wow. Like, sounds so professional. And I was like, okay, now that I was hearing it, I'm like, all right, I'll put it in front of Joe. So if that's ever something you've got, you know, definitely reach out. So on that deal, we actually did it. We did the renovations, made it beautiful. And this is just north of Hartford, Connecticut, in a small town called Enfield, Connecticut. And on that deal, we found a great realtor in the area. So I'm going to tell you how we did it all virtually, guys. The lead came in virtually. I've never been to the house. I never saw it. And actually, past summer... When we were driving through Connecticut, because we went to Boston for a couple weeks, we didn't even stop to go look at it. We just kept driving right through. No, I want to go to Emily Dickinson's house instead. There we go. And <laughs> we did. So um, we never went to the property. We never saw it. I went on Zillow, and I was looking for some recent sales in the area. Why? Because I was looking for a realtor in the area who was boots on the ground, who has experience in that town. I don't know, Enfield, Connecticut. I feel like I do now. But I found in the same area, I found a bunch of properties that were recently sold. And I would look up to see who the agent was. And I found this lady's name, like three different properties that she sold. And I'm like, oh, yeah, sold property, sold property, sold property. And her name is popping up in all three of them. I Googled her. I looked her up. She had like 400, like five-star reviews on Google. I'm like, here's my, here's my lady. Call her up. I explained to her, hey, I'm, my name is Joe Delafave. I'm a real estate investor. I'm going to be buying this property. Sometimes when I buy a property, I turn it into a rental. Sometimes I do a fix and flip, and I'm considering doing a fix and flip on this one. What do you think if I were to list it with you, I could sell it for? And she was like, oh, I live around the corner from this. I know this area. I do all my business in this area. And as I'm on the phone, she's like, I'm pulling in the driveway right now. <laughs> I was like, fantastic. She does the walkthrough. She tells us exactly... Hey, you're going to need a contractor to do all these things. She got three different quotes. She's been doing it for like 30 years. She knew all the contractors in town. She knew all the attorneys, everything, because she's been doing this for a long time. I think the three quotes was key there. She did. And she says, Joe, you're... Write that down if you're taking notes. You find out a kickbot realtor who he kind of... She needed to have all these great ratings on Google. Like her name just kept popping up. And then, you know, so she had three great connects that have you know, contact information for contractors and then you can get three quotes. So then from there you can pick the best one. And that's what she did. She's like, Joe, you know, obviously this is going to need some work. I'm going to get you a couple different quotes. I know all the contractors who do good work who won't rip you off. Um, I'll set it up. So just saying maybe get three quotes, not just go with one. All the time. Right. 
<laughs> Why are you saying that? Right? Well, I don't know. The deal in South Carolina, we only had one contractor. Ah, <laughs> uh, we still did that one, but lesson yes. learned. <laughs> uh, but what happened with her was we had three different coats, three different contractors. Did a lot of business with them. We picked the middle one because his pricing was pretty in line with everybody else. He did very good quality work. She used this guy a lot, but he was also available like in the next week besides. Yeah. And so, she even helped guide us a little. She was like, okay, these are the pros, these are the cons. Okay, like I'm not telling you what to do, but this is what I would do. <laughs> and I will tell you what, they knocked that house out of the park. We got 18000 over asking when many properties weren't selling for over asking. We got over asking. We got way more than we even thought we would for the house. They did an amazing job. So we got a lead from having a podcast. We made the deal all without ever seeing it. Took over payments for a short period of time. Took over her payments for a short period of time. So it was a little bit of a subtail action there. That's exactly what it was. Get it, girl. Right up top. But that's what it was, guys. So instead of buying the house for cash for 200 and putting in some money, we only came to the table about 50 grand, and we split that cost with our with uh, the one who brought us the lead. Mm -hmm. So really for us, it was only about 25000 total to fix and flip a whole house and the uh, rate of return on that money was well over a hundred percent. So it was a great deal for everybody. Our seller, she gave us a 10 year term. I don't know if you remember that or not. Oh, she, I remember. She gave us a 10 year term to get our cashed out, but we got our cashed out in a handful of months. So she got all the equity way sooner. Shout out. She was, I'm sure thrilled. Um, <laughs> but that's what happened on that deal. So we do fix and flips virtually. Um, it does create some challenges. You got to use, a lot of cameras, a lot of cell phones, a lot of lives and FaceTimes. But guys, you could do it just the same. It really is. And I will tell you from doing them virtually, that prevents me from spending how much time going to these houses. Mm -hmm. It prevents me from coming home with stuff that are in these houses because I used to get yelled at when we would do fix and flips. You're running out of room. You just kept bringing home more like shovels and chairs, <laughs> lamps that we didn't need. <laughs> All types of stuff, right? That's the part of it. But, yeah, but the key really is like if you're a go-getter, like there are other go-getters out there, interview a couple of realtors, see which one you really, you know, gel well with. And then in this day and age, there's just all the ways to stay in communication if you want to be super fancy. Like if I were the one in contact, I would probably create like an Asana board or Abby, which she does have her notion board. Joe's old school. He just goes through text and calls. That's just what he does. Um, but, you know, there's definitely like levels to you being like able to really streamline things. But Are you showing off my gray hair now? No, but a it's, there. it's a little frustrating because sometimes the phone is the. Uh, <laughs> well, let me tell you, my phone has it's dead by noon. So at least I, our, our contractor back up in. Um, in Rochester, I have his phone number. So I'm always like calling and texting and checking in. Plus I pay him. So I, I mean, I pay him all, but it's <laughs> kind of funny. Oh, it's so funny. Cause every time I'm they're like, what's your email? And I always give him your email. Yeah, so. me. My wife always gets all of them, but that's how stuff gets done, right? But yeah. You, you, you want to create your timeline. Um, and then if you're just going to buy the property, you know, it's really great to, if you're going to do a rent to own and you just need to maybe do a clean out, maybe they know somebody in town. Um, and then you want to like what's in it for them, right? So like Joe said, if you're going to fix and flip it, like you're going to pay them, but find somebody boots on the ground, whether it's through a Facebook community that you can know, like, and trust somebody in there by referrals. That's why we love our community so much. And then also like there's Thumbtack. I haven't really used it in particular. I have. You have? Yep. Okay. It's what? good. You can find contractors on there. Um, It's, it's like anything, you know, you just want to make sure to do some due diligence, try to hop on a, a Zoom or a FaceTime, you know, keep it simple, but also like try to meet the people. Don't just take their word for it. Yeah. And the one thing I'd always say, if we're going to buy a property, it's in a new area and it's something that we're going to decide to keep for a rent to own. I like to find out in the local Facebook groups, like who are the contractors in town to talk to who come highly recommended the neat thing is there's so many people that you leave Google reviews and all the different reviews now. That's mm -hmm. helpful. That doesn't mean it's 100%. So the one thing I will say is don't pay them all in one shot. Like mm -hmm. we break up the payments. Um, you know, if it's going to cost $5,000 to paint, well, you might get like $2,500 up front. And you'll get the other $2,500 once I know the job has been completed to satisfaction, right? And sometimes too, like they'll even work with you if things kind of got a little hairy at the end, like they could get their cut at closing because I know that happened. Um, in the South Carolina deal. I was going to say the Connecticut. <laughs> oh, that one too. How about that? <laughs> so right. there are creative ways even for that. But any other questions? Thanks so much for being here, guys. We've got about five minutes left. 
Um, but I mean, it doesn't matter what the deal is. We call it the playbook because it just depends on the numbers and which way like the seller needs to exit this property. And do they have a lot of equity? Do they have no equity? Can they wait? Can they not? Right. And I think that's my favorite thing is to find creative finance deals. Oh yeah. Um, cause they are turnkey houses. Although you and your cash deals, I don't think you'll ever I just stop love, loving those. <laughs> I just, they just fall into our lap. Somebody says, Hey Joe, I won't Take sell my for house. terms, but Hey, I want, like, I'll give you an example. We've got one in Pensacola. We're doing a fix and flipping. Um, I think the after repair value is about two seventy five. all done up two fifty, two seventy five. The seller wanted one. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Go ahead. What? No, go ahead. I'll let you finish first. <laughs> The seller would not do terms, but she would take 150. We put a new roof on it and we're just going to paint, do some flooring on the inside, all in. We're going to be well under 200,000. So you paid how much for a property in Florida cash? Well, it depends on which one you want to talk about because we well, also have I, there's this whole thing going all around the Instagram. I keep saying is like, there's no way you could buy a property for under 300,000 unless it's in like a really bad area. Wrong. You just got to know Florida, guys. Um, you know what? And that's so funny because we're from New York. So everybody, if you're not in New York, so a bunch of you are, all from all our other friends who are not in New York, maybe you've never been to New York, New York is a really big state. When you hear New York City, it's this one tiny little bleep on the map. Mm -hmm. There are more cow fields and corn fields in upstate New York than you could ever even imagine. So not everybody lives in New York City. True so Florida is also a really big state. And if you're along the coast, yeah, obviously things get to be expensive. If you're in major cities, things get to be expensive. But Pensacola is not like a little sleepy town. It's a pretty fair sized city. It's got a large military base there. Um, so like that's pretty well known. And then our Williston house, that's a little bit more rural, mm -hmm. but it's in a place where it's still close to the water. It backs to a golf course. And we bought that house for $110,000. So cash. Um, obviously it's worth considerably more than that. And what do we do? We put in the air conditioning system. We have to fix the garage door because that's why our little Instagram, like TikTok, we were joking around. I want to just list it and sell it, but he wants to keep it. I love it. I don't know. I just like keeping properties guys. It's kind of fun. Um, All right. Last question of the day here, Susie, after you post your Facebook ad and they tell you that they're going to list it and prep it, they're prepping for a realtor. What do you do? What do you do? Uh, that's a great question. I said, would you rather just list it with a realtor or would you like to sell it and not pay any commissions at all? And then roll into the script. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we still ask the questions. Yeah. And if it's not listed yet and they haven't signed a contract, I'd ask the question. Even if they have it under a contract with a realtor, I'm still going to run the script. I'm still going to ask the questions. Now you got to understand if I make a deal with those people, mm -hmm. I will have to pay the agent or bring them in on the deal of some sort. So that's the case. But for me, I like dealing directly with the sellers. And I've got a lot of friends that are realtors. Shout out. I know you guys have to do a lot of work to get um, your business and I get it. But sometimes when I'm looking to buy a property and there's a realtor in the way and they're the gatekeeper, my gosh, they make it just so much harder because now I have to explain what terms are to the realtor. And many times, guys, they just don't understand it. They don't know. They don't understand it. Don't get me wrong. There's a bunch that do majority of them do not because um, I believe they don't teach you that when you're first getting started, but it's in further education. So when you're going to renew, they start going over that. But I think many realtors just kind of glance over it because I can't tell you how many realtors down in Florida where they're, they've been doing it for 38 years because they love to brag about that, but have no clue what creative finance is. They barely know what seller finance is on a free and clear house. They don't understand how to do a wrap majority of them. So you got to understand um, if I'm going to talk to somebody who has a property, um, I want to go directly to the seller and have that conversation with them and try to eliminate all the gatekeepers. And then if we do make that deal and it is listed, I will bring that realtor in. I will tell them what terms that we've agreed on and I will tell them to write that deal up. Um, they still got to get paid, right? So I understand that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I will also try to negotiate what that commission is because I didn't come in through their marketing where I saw the house for sale, their seller reached out to me and said, Joe, would you buy my property? We asked some questions. And then through those questions, I find out it's listed with the realtor. So that's just super important to know. Um, but always ask the questions. And if you don't have our script, you should, 
It's all for free right on our website, creativefinanceplaybook.com. So if you go to creativefinanceplaybook.com, on there, you could book a call with me. If you want to talk more about real estate, coaching, all of that kind of stuff. If you want to not do that, you just want our script, it's on there, guys. You can get that script. So I would definitely recommend sending it for our email list because if you're on there, I mean, we're sending out so much cool stuff. It is absolutely amazing. And all of the things to get you started and get you into some real estate deals. And that's what, what matters. Yeah. And so to go with that, the cold call demonstration, it's it's more of just, you know, running that script. If you look at, because I think you're coming in through the Facebook group there, Susie. Um, I know for sure on the Facebook group and in YouTube, just look up Creative Finance Playbook Live Seller Calls. You'll hear uh, Joe making some of those calls. And we would have, if you really remember back in the day, we'd we have the, do another one. We'd do the cold call Olympics. Uh, we would go live and there we'd bring our whole team on a Zoom. We'd go live. And we would host the cold call Olympics and we were just cold calling people, making deals. And I got to tell you, every time we held one of those events, I've always loved them because we always make deals too. So we got to do more of those. Yeah, reach out. And if you're coming in through Instagram or YouTube, you're saying invite, you know, just go uh, reach out through the Creative Finance Playbook or message Joe on his cell phone again. I'm getting messages I'll right say, now. Just so shoot Joe a message. We'll get you into our system so you guys can get all these awesome goodies that we're sharing because we understand like it's a lot when you're getting started and you can get really overwhelmed. You just need to focus on generating leads and talking to sellers. The Bam! Rest falls into place step by step by step. So that's the best advice I can give you. But uh that's I, the best advice out there, dear. It is. So okay. many folks want to focus on all the other little things. It's really that easy. Generate leads. Talk to people. And guys, if you don't have incoming leads, you don't have a business. Da -da. So how do you do that? There's many ways. There's We have a list of like 25 different ways to get leads. And out of the 25 different ways, six of them cost money. There's like 19, 18, 19 of them. Maybe that I'll share free. that in one of my weekly PDFs too. You're going to give away that one? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Dang. You're good. <laughs> All right. Who wants to see that? Oh, boy. <laughs> Write down in the comment section, free leads. If you want to get our PDF of like the 20 something ways of not all of them are free, like 18 of them are for free, but there's probably like six of them that you could pay for. But if you want to see that, comment down below free leads. If you want to see Jen, throw that up on the email list because mm -hmm. if you want to get a copy of that, I mean, guys, the Facebook thing is all on there. The, I mean, there's so many different ways. And so what I see it where they're already coming in. So free leads, guys, if you want to see those. And I will say for <laughs> sure, if you have an abundance of leads coming in, you ask some simple leads questions. Leads pouring out of your eyeballs, according to one of our clients. Yeah, according to one of our clients, she says, I've got leads pouring out of my eyeballs and she can't even market anymore because she's got so many she's following up with, which is all great. But if you want to see these free leads coming to your mailbox and how you can get them too, we're going to do a, a mailing or a, an email list for that. And we will share with you our favorite ways. All right. So reach out to us. We're really reaching out to you either way. Let's stay connected guys. Every Tuesday, 2 PM Eastern, we come live and we are bringing you some really awesome guests. So stay tuned and look forward to chatting with you all in the next few weeks here. Yay. Yeah, it's fun stuff. And next Tuesday, we have a good one coming. You don't want to miss it. So put it on your calendar next Tuesday, <laughs> live two o'clock. Uh, we're going to go over some really, really cool stuff, and we might even have a special guest. I think we do. All right. Well, until then, we will see you next time. See you guys. Bye.